What's up guys, it's Mike here from Gamefish Productions, so I'm going to go over what I've really been up to the past couple months. As you guys probably know from the subscriber video, I had a retrofit done on my truck, or I actually built it. So I'm going to go over how I did that, so it gives you guys something interesting to do. It also gives you guys, anyone looking to retrofit, kind of an idea of how to do it. So I ended up doing one on my 2014 F-150, so... I'm going to go over how it was done and what I did and what I used for the whole process. So watch the video, enjoy, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And this is going to be kind of a slideshow slash little tiny clips in there. And I'm going to do a voiceover. So enjoy. So my truck is a 2014 F-150. It's an STX. It's closer to a base model, but I love the truck. It's good. It's got a 5.0 Coyote in it. And the truck has gone through quite a few changes since bone stock, which is the first picture. It's gone, had a stripe, it's got different wheels, different lights for plug and play HIDs and whatnot. And then this is the final look as of earlier. Different wheels, everything. It's, I love my truck. So we went and got Morimoto stuff, D2Ss with ballast, wire harness, the whole nine yards. And I took OEM headlights, I bought these, these were used. They are regular ones, they're not uh, aftermarket, so they're Permaseal. So the best way to do it was to bake the headlight and well, soften it up so I can pry them apart. Now the other way you can also do it is use a heat gun, like I'm doing this. These are actually aftermarket headlights for some parts I took. And heat gun works pretty good too, but I prefer baking them. It makes the whole thing hot and it takes the part easier. And I'm using a screwdriver in this. You can also use a putty knife, and either skinny or wide. Both work pretty well. And once that's apart, you're gonna have, this is the lens, and it's got three screws that hold the bezel into it, and pops right out. Those are T10 Torx. Uh, the aftermarkets are actually Phillips. And this one's all chrome, which is gonna get de-chromed later on. You can leave it if you want to. There's three tabs here to pop the reflector out. And it's pretty simple. You can use a screwdriver and it pops right out like it's nothing. And here I'm actually de-chroming the reflectors. I pop the bowls out and I'm using Easy Off Oven Cleaner. And it works pretty well. A lot of people use it in the retrofitting business. It takes chrome off pretty well, but there's other methods as well. I like to use uh, five gallon buckets of purple power. All you gotta do is submerge it and a lot of the chrome comes off. But oven cleaner works pretty good too. I wouldn't recommend using it inside of your house. It's pretty potent and it's pretty harsh. You don't want to get it any cuts. I learned that the hard way. So after that, I'm going to take this to the sink and usually use uh, hot water. That little metal piece got pulled off later. Apparently it doesn't get dechromed. But you're not going to need it anyways after you're done dechroming everything. Go once you do a retrofit. Hot water works the best to get it off. You want to get all of it off before you paint it and start prepping it. And I'm going to take Dawn dish soap on a sponge later and clean most of this up. Right now I'm just scrubbing it down and getting just hot water on it. There's a little bit of chrome left in the crevices which you can come back with scotch bright later and clean it up and it's not that bad. This is kind of why I like dunking it better because you submerge the whole thing and it's always in con constant contact with fluid and it takes most of it off versus you always got to keep spraying and spraying and spraying with oven cleaner. Now here, this is what it looks like after everything is de-chromed. This is the reflector and the bezel. That's both the reflectors done. So I'm going to get ready to start porting them out shortly. And after this, I ported them out. The one on the left got ported already. And then I primed it with duplicate color primer. I like this stuff better. It lays down nice and it etches itself into plastic kind of. It lays nice. This is what it looks like it's all primed up. I did it inside of a box just to try to keep spray off the grass and whatnot. And then I used duplicate color. It's universal black. It's the color match or perfect match stuff. It sprayed pretty well. I did three, four coats of it and let it dry. Then the bezels I primed with the same duplicate color, the primer, and then I sprayed it with custom paint I had uh, made by Bumper to Bumper, and it worked out great. And the color match of it is perfect. It matches my truck perfectly, and I'm really happy with it. 
and I left the little bowl where the turn signal light is, I left it black after I dechromed it and it turned out really nice. I actually had the, got some clear reflectors and I installed a piece of vinyl with the F-150 cut out. Looks really nice. It's all red and black now. It fits the truck theme pretty well. And this is probably my favorite part, how it lights up behind it. And I love how that turned out. There's a couple ideas I got that from before and it turned out nice. Now, I, these are projectors are foot in. Once you put them in, you install them into the truck and when it gets later, aim them where the cutoff is. These are diode dynamic 110 millimeter switchback halos. And they're a really nice product compared to the Mori Motos I had before. They're very bright, as you can see. That's just the white, and then here's the amber. Both are bright, and I'm really happy with them. So I actually put them behind the projector shrouds. These are Apollo 2.0s. And you just use fishing line to tie them down. And then I pop them onto the projector. I use, uh, it's quick weld or quick set or something from JB Weld, and it stick it on there. And then I use Morimoto Retro Rubber and I put it in the track of the headlight, put it in the oven, heat it up, and get ready to put the lens on. And that's the finished product. Turned out really nice. I'm happy with it. Yep, and then there's the F-150 lit up all put together. The, ret the Retro Rubber is mixed in with black butyl, but that's alright. It's still sealed. And there's the final product. Looks great. So that is how the whole thing went together, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. It wasn't the most like best because I didn't have really have a guy videotaping me the whole time while I was doing it. But it's kind of nice so you guys get a little bit of content to see what I've been up to lately. But that was a lot of fun. I would do it again in a heartbeat. I would do other vehicles as well, and it's not as hard as people actually think it is. If you have any kind of mechanical abilities it's not bad it's just time consuming and you got to be patient with it so thank you guys for watching this video i hope you guys enjoyed it be sure to comment like and subscribe if you have any questions about this and i'll see you guys next time see ya